All right, welcome to CWC Labs, another natural news exclusive lab science project here. This is Mike Adams, and we are here with glyphosate. This is 41% glyphosate, and we have diluted it into this jug to make it two parts per million or two micrograms per milliliter of concentration. That's two ppm. And what we're going to do is run this through all the water filters that you see here. And we're going to test to see whether water filters can remove glyphosate herbicide. Now, why is this a big question? Because many of these water filters claim to remove 99% of pesticides and herbicides, or even more than that. And that might be true with many different pesticides and herbicides, but glyphosate is the one that we now know causes cancer. This is a weed killer, and it turns out from a chemistry point of view, this stuff is water soluble, which means it's probably going to be very difficult for these water filters to remove a water soluble herbicide. So this is the test we're going to do here. I'm going to share the results with you publicly at naturalnews.com. Let's just take a look at what we have here. We've got, what is this random unbranded water filter? Uh, this is uh, Mavia, Mavia right there. This is zero water. We're testing Brita. This is a Brita water filter. See the logo there? Over here we have a Seychelle. We've got Pure, that's what this is. A different Seychelle water filter. A couple of different like multi-element filters that you can buy online. Oh man, this one has water filter incontinence. Look at that. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to deal with that later. And then going around to the other side, we've got some camping filters, a pump to pure, some Seychelles, sports bottles, water bottles, sort of cheap supposed military bottle. <laughs> We've got, what is this, pH life here. We've got the Be Ready water filtration system, the crystal drop gravity filter. We've got the Dalton filter here and the Big Berkey here. Now, I know this doesn't cover all the filters in the world, but I think you'll see why that doesn't matter because my guess, this is just my guess, we're gonna let the science actually speak for itself on this, but my guess is that none of these will remove much glyphosate. That's just my guess, knowing how water soluble this is and how it goes right through the chromatography columns that we have on our instruments. For example, we use uh, C18 columns for chromatography, it's very common in LCMS applications, and glyphosate just goes right through it. Nothing holds on to glyphosate. So my guess is that all these filters are going to fail. The only one that might actually work here is this Berkey, just because, well, let me show you. It's got these add-on filters right here. These are like arsenic fluoride add-ons. There's a possibility, just depending on the chemistry, that those might hold on to glyphosate, but, I'm not convinced until I see it, because I, frankly, these days, I don't believe any of these claims until I reproduce them in my lab. You know what I mean? All these companies market products, and by the way, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to slam these companies. These are good products. These products do filter water. They're very effective in many ways. I mean, even we promote the Big Berkey, by the way, on our website, and the Big Berkey, you know, the gravity filter, just like the this one, Dalton, Crystal Drop, and there, there are others out there. They do a great job of eliminating bacteria and amoeba and many different chemicals and heavy metals as well. But glyphosate's a different animal. So if these filters don't remove glyphosate, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold it against them, actually. I don't think that the chemistry makes it possible. I think they're all gonna fail at glyphosate, frankly, but that just means they're all gonna be equally ineffective at that particular herbicide. Doesn't mean that they're not effective in other ways. All these water filters have a good function. By the way, if you're looking at the background over here, check this out. This is our pipette robot. It's called the Freedom Evo. And this robot, this is cool. This is an actuating arm here. And the pipette tips move up and down. I programmed it and it does it does all the automated, automated pipetting into different vials. I actually even programmed these on my 3D printer print these out. These are 3D printed 50 mil vial holders. I actually had to 
<laughs> design those and print them myself since a lot of this stuff doesn't exist. You have to make it manually with CAD programs and everything. Uh, these are some vial shakers and this is a temperature controller here. This is a pretty cool robot. It's offline at the moment, as you can see. It's not totally connected, but we'll probably get it hooked back up again. However, we, we ran some tests. It's interesting. We found that human beings actually have more accurate pipetting than that robot. <laughs> That's what's kind of freaky about it. So anyway, let the test begin. I will show you the instrument where we're going to test this and we'll look at the results later on. You're going to find all the results at naturalnews.com. Let me show you the mass spec instrument next, but be sure to Stay tuned to naturalnews.com for the exclusive results. This is the kind of research that the FDA doesn't do, that the EPA doesn't do because the EPA is a corrupt bureaucracy of quack science morons, by the way, who cover up the truth instead of sharing the truth like we do. So we are the only independent lab in the world who is bringing you this research so that you can find out the truth. Do water filters remove glyphosate herbicide? I'm guessing no, but we're going to find out the real answer shortly. Sign up to the naturalnews.com email newsletter to be alerted to the results or just check the website in the days ahead as we publish them. So I've shown you this before in some other videos. This is the Waters Z-Spray interface right here. And this cone shows you where you've actually got the, uh, the water sample being sprayed out of that nozzle coming down and going into this sample introduction cone kind of hard to see but it goes into this triple quad mass spec this is the column right here the actual chromatography column Ta -da. yeah that's eight hundred dollars right there in case you've ever wondered what columns are you hear me talking about columns like here's here's another column right here that's what a column is seven hundred eight hundred dollars and uh, easy to ruin, too, by the way. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, you can, you know, corrupt your columns or fa make them fail. Um, these are just standards right here. This, is, this has nothing to do with the current sample. Here's the, uh, the auto sampler. And these are some of the tests that we've been doing for glyphosate. Uh, these right here are some standards. Oh, actually, let me show you the second tray. Uh, these are the most recent standards. You can see right here, boom, what's written on that? 10 micrograms per milliliter in water. See that? I don't know if that's in focus, but there you go. 10 micrograms per mil. This is one microgram per mil right here. See that? And this is 100 nanograms per milliliter right here, which is of course one tenth of one microgram per mil. In other words, this uh, this is 100 ppb, essentially. This is 1 ppm, and this is 10 ppm. Those are some standards that we're testing. And then all the all the lids, well, right here, the, one, the yellow ones are like food samples, gray ones are different samples that we're running as well. And what happens is this arm, I don't know if you can see this robotic arm in here. Let's see if I can get it to you. That right there. That arm moves along this, this uh, radial axis here, and this tray rotates so that it can, the needle can go down and inject the right vial, and it can pull up. In, in this case, we're using two microliters, so two millionths of a liter goes into this channel right here, this tube, and then it goes through this hub, and it ends up going into uh, this, this right here. This is the syringe that controls the actual volume of the sample that's drawn up. And from there, makes its way through the column over here that I showed you earlier, goes through the column into this distribution hub here on the triple quad instrument. And from there, the channel goes through this into the Z-spray interface, and it gets atomized with heat and nitrogen gas, and of course, an electrical charge here on the surface of the cone then it goes into the triple quad mass spec, and from there, we fragment it using quadrupoles and collision cells. You know, we scan it and fragment it to get the results that we want. So there you go, there's the instrument. That's how we do it. This is how glyphosate is tested. 
So we're going to put those water filters through the test here and see what we can come up with and see what it tells us. We'll let the science speak for itself. This is Mike Adams here, the health ranger for CWC Labs and naturalnews.com. These results will be published exclusively on Natural News. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.